everyone. I'm Navid Marty, and you're watching AfterBuzz TV's Mini Spotlight On, and we got a special guest, and he's been in almost everything you can name, and that's what, at least definitely what it seemed to me. And he's also been in Venom. He's going to be alongside Tom Hardy in Fonzo. You don't want to miss this guy. Stay tuned. You're tuned in to AfterBuzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. I'm Navid Marty. This is AfterBuzz TV's Mini Spotlight on. We got Wayne Pere inside the building. And thank you so much for being here. This is super cool. You know, and especially fan of Marvel. You got Venom on your IMDb list, on your credits list. You have Fonzo, which is coming out soon. You have, how many shows do you think you've been a part of? No, oh, that's a good question. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, close to 150 at least. 150? <laughs> That's film That's and incredible. Television. That's incredible, yeah. though. That's something a lot of people out here don't get to achieve. And, I mean, you've already crossed that. I've been fortunate, yeah. 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 And now, before I jump too far ahead, Tom Petty was just on. Yes. I cut that off, but tell me, that was your fast go-to of a song choice. Well, yeah. What's you your know, connection? Well, he just passed recently, obviously. And, um, uh, yeah, I'm just a, just a fan. Great songwriter. And, uh, um I didn't see him in concert, unfortunately, so I'm a little Never. sad about that. No. Oh. I missed my opportunity. Is That's that it. your number one favorite, um, I guess, any musician? I wouldn't musician. say my favorite, no. Uh -huh. You know, I mean, uh, songwriters, I would say, he's definitely one of my favorite songwriters. Uh -huh. uh, Joni Mitchell is probably my favorite songwriter. Um, but, uh, yeah, Sheryl Crow. So I like, there's some female yeah. artists that I really like as well. Uh, but uh, on the rock and roll side, it's, you know, Tom, Betty, Tom Petty is definitely... You know, up there. Who do you think to, you know, like you said, over 150 credits, uh, during this time you have a lot of traveling to do. And what song or what artist do you think you've listened to the most throughout your whole acting career, you know, on location? Because you have to pass a lot of time. Well, yeah, and you also you can use music as some sort of preparation. True, so, exactly. Know, what was, do you think? Who do you think you've listened to the most during this whole career you've had so far? Uh, a lot of Sheryl Crow, actually. And uh, who else? Hmm. Uh, Tom Petty's on the rotation to uh, Sheryl Crow. Uh, you know, I listen to Zeppelin. I like Zeppelin. Uh -huh. um, Is it also, different moods for different, I guess, jobs you're going to be on? Yeah. And it's, uh, again, I could use it for preparation. I worked with Laura Linney recently on something, and uh, we were both talking about, okay, what kind of music do you listen to? And for this project... Uh, she was listening to some some country music or something, which is not typical for her. She said, but that was just what sort of struck her at the time. Yeah. So uh, seemed fitting. Yeah, yeah. It, it, uh, the the tone of the scene has something to do with it. Uh -huh. you know, with, with the material that we're working on, um, because music can sort of prime you a little bit. I think it can loosen you up. You know, if yeah. you're really connected to it and really taking it in, you know, it takes you on a little journey. Well, you know? now most recently you had Venom, and you played Dr. Emerson. Tell us a little bit about the character and maybe what song choice you had there, if any. Well, there was no song choice for uh, for um, Dr. Emerson. You know, the character, in all honesty, wasn't very well um, fleshed out in mm -hmm. the script. So a lot of the stuff we just, you know, on the spot, mm -hmm. was, you know, choices on the spot. And uh, Do you mean choices on the spot as a lot of lines were improvised or motions? There's a little bit of that um, improvised, but really sort of the arc of the character. Um, when you're in such a big film... And you're playing a supporting character like Emerson. Uh, oftentimes, the the writer doesn't completely flesh it out. Uh -huh. you know, you're sort of functional in the script, oftentimes. And um, uh, you know, if you want to, really, as an actor, for me to be more invested in it and more interested in what's going on, I'm always, you know, when I'm put in that position, which isn't often, thankfully, but I'm I'm digging in, trying to find some angle, some, you know, some history that I can interject that's not in the script at all yeah. but just to flesh it out and make me more more human when you and, say kind of dive into that character was it kind of looking through comics the comics to find out more of who your character could be or what do you think his history would have been or lineage? well you know i take the script obviously i read this it all yeah. starts with the script so I'll, I'll i'll analyze the script and uh just see what my function in the story is yeah uh, and if they, I'm not getting any clues, then I'll just make choices. You know, it's our job to make choices. So if they're not given to me, I make my own. And it's really all about being able to invest in, you know, in the scenes, whatever you're doing, whatever the, you know, the storyline is at that point, or whatever's taking place in that scene specifically, to find some sort of investment in the relationship and the circumstance to 
to make it more palpable for you. Yeah. You know? And now moving to Fonzo, it, it would staying on that same kind of question would be a change of music or artists you're listening to, I assume. Well, a different time period, yes. Uh-huh. Uh, and also different character. I was more in a position of power in Fonzo. Um, you know, I'm like an F- FBI director in mm-hmm. that. So, uh, um, you know, and it's early 1950s. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I don't always listen to period music, but, you know, that could be something someone does. Um, but, yeah, it, really the, the the tone of the scene would affect more my music choice if I'm going to listen to music. Yeah. But I don't always listen to music. Now, yeah. how what was the preparation for Fonzo like? Because you're more of a good guy. And you are... Well, I looked at FBI. myself as a good guy, and true. And, uh, <laughs> that's an. Act. I'm talking <laughs> that, to an actor, folks. Wow, so, that's true. Fair point. You know, <laughs> yeah. I was just maybe misguided, but but that, that that is a point, I guess, to to acknowledge that when you're in a, you know, when you're playing a character that's in a circumstance such as this, where you know you have this alien life form that's mm-hmm. brought down to Earth, and you know it's it's wreaking havoc, and your you know lives are disposable. Um, it was important for me, anyway, personally, to make a choice where, okay, I'm doing this for the greater good. Okay, yeah, there there are some um, there's some collateral damage along the way, but I have a reason I'm doing this, and I can accept. I see, because part of the whole th- deal was my adulation of Riz's character, Riz Ahmed's character. Uh-huh. I'm working under him. I'm thinking, okay, no, this I believe in him. I believe in what he's doing. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, I I make choices to to like justify my actions and yeah. then obviously by the end I'm like okay this is not I can't I can't abide by this any longer yeah. so which ends up costing my life well I don't know if I should ruin that for people but um uh who yeah. knows yeah but back to back to FBI back to now you're in the role of FBI where you know you're going to be taking out I mean one of the most legendary gangsters yeah, of all time at, at the time he's already um you know he's in Florida he's retired he's uh, retired he's 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 not he's more of a nuisance at this point, uh-huh. you know, which is one of the things that that he thinks is that I think is interesting about the film is that it's very late in uh, Capone's life. So you're seeing a whole different side that you've never seen in anything else. Um, and in that film and in the, in the sequences that I was doing, it's more about the relationship with my underlings. So I'm an older FBI, you know, in someone in position of management yeah. dealing with younger FBI agents who are enthusiastic about, Hey, listen, this is Capone. We really have to do this. And so, um, it was mainly really about humor and, mm. and kind of being off the cuff and loose. So I was a little, um, it was a looser character than Emerson. Emerson's a little wound tight yeah. and, uh, uh, in less control, I would say. And the character in Fonzo is a little bit more in control. So, that was mainly for me as an actor. It was just uh, just staying loose uh-huh. and uh, um, trying to trying to really embrace more of a, a kind of a improvisational feel to it. For the, the the material that I was doing, it felt yeah. more appropriate. Now, look, you always wanted to feel improvisational. I think as an actor, you want to feel like, oh, well, was that really scripted? Did they write that, or is yeah. he just saying that? That's, That's not true. the ideal. But this was even more so, just in the dynamics and uh, the way the scenes were structured. You know. So it was a little looser, actually, you know, a little more fun in general as a character. Do you find yeah. yourself wanting to play characters that have room for improvisation? Always, yeah. Always. I, I mean, I, I don't personally know. I mean, I or it might be a personal. Are you preference. an actor? Are you... No, no, no. Hosting. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, look, it's it's great to be on a set where you're allowed some freedom. Yeah. To explore. Um, because unlike theater. There's really no rehearsal rehearsal process to speak of in film and television, most of the time. In my experience, there's you know occasionally yeah. you'll have a little bit of rehearsal. So, um, oftentimes, um, you know it's it's important to if if you have an environment where it's a little looser for the actors, you know you you'll usually get better results. You know uh-huh. the freer the space is, the freer the space that the director is able to create the more opportunity there is for some sort of magic to happen. Yeah. And that's what you want. You want the magic to happen. You want it to be loose and 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 the surprises are just the gold. So all the the great performances that we all think of in films, you know, they were 
you know, they were it was a, it was a loose. I, I would I would. They had room guess, for magic to happen. Yeah, they had the room yeah. for the magic to happen. It was a loose environment, yeah. and they were it, you know the, the directors were cultivating a space where the actors were loose and free and felt safe. Yeah, and were able to just be completely free. Which that's so that's what I'm always looking for. I'm looking for freedom. Do you have any other projects coming up that you would say that you had that opportunity to, I guess, work in as well, where there was room for magic? Let's think. Uh, I think the uh, the Dern Lardern film, which is um, what's the name of it? Do you remember, it's uh, uh, um, Trial by Fire. Mm-hmm. Uh, that I felt, you know, because I played uh, Laura's husband in it, and. Uh, you know that felt really again a very safe environment and and very very loose. Um, so I you know I'm hoping that'll you know they'll put something to good uh, something good together there. Um, when you try when you get um, called to I don't know read a script play a character or if somebody has interest in you mm-hmm. what do you look for in choosing what jobs you would like to do? Is it kind of having that room? Well, the, the ideally, idea. yeah, ideally, it's with a, a director that I trust and a, and actors that I've worked with before, and I, and I trust or I know their work and I I respect them and I I'd like to work with them. Um, you know, uh, um, sometimes job it's a jo- it's a job. You know, yeah. you take it. This job comes along the way, and yeah, I'll take that job. Yeah. Um, but ideally, it's you know, if if one can pick and choose, it's uh, that's the things that I'm looking for. Like, okay, what's or, or just the most interesting character, and because you can never, unless I've worked with someone before, I really don't know what I'm going to get on set. Yeah. So I go in, you know, I look at this material and say, okay, yeah, this is really interesting. This is um, a very interesting character. I'm reading. I had to um, do something tomorrow actually, and I said, okay, this guy's interesting. So uh, that's always helpful if you feel like it's a little different than something you've already played, or um, you feel like the character for it to work. You're going to have to be fully, uh, fully invested and in, and in, and in, um, uh, sort of. I guess the more spontaneous the character feels off the page, the better chance I feel I'll have to to you know to work in that you know sort of space yeah. when we're on set. You know, if it feels like some a character that's really locked down and you know. Um, you know, so because sometimes you read something and say, okay, yeah, they're going to really rein this in tight. You know, they're mm-hmm. not going to give me a lot of flexibility. So, kind of turns you, it doesn't turn you away from doing the project, but it kind of, you know what you're in for. Exactly. And you don't have any wiggle room with it. Exactly. Yeah. And I'll know how to approach the director when it, you know, when it comes time. And, uh, and hope that he listens. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully that they're, yeah, they're open to listening. They, what's a, what's a, sorry, what's a bucket list job that you would, would enjoy having that would give you the wiggle room? Um, would it be another Marvel film, for example, like uh, of a caliber like that, a film like that, or would it be Marvel would be great. I'd, you know, I'd look, a series would be great on, on one of the, you know, HBO or one of the alternative platforms mm-hmm. that are, you know, a little bit looser as opposed to a network, but you know, I do a network television as well. I've done a lot of that. Um, but, uh, you know, one of these series like, um, what's the series with, um, Billy Bob in it? Uh, oh, it's um, not giant. What is it called? I know what you're talking about. Like that, it's it? something like that, I believe. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember. But, yeah. you know, that type of character would be, you know, something really in my wheelhouse as well. So mm-hmm. someone who's, you know, an alcoholic. So someone who's kind of on the fringe of society a little bit. Someone who's who's damaged yeah. and uh, uh, eccentric and uh, maybe slightly dangerous, but also, you know, vulnerable and, and, uh, and, uh, you know, the kind of heart of gold kind of guy, you know? You love him, um, and you hate him at the same time. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, so they That's leave you, you feeling a little mixed. Yeah, you're forced to deal with the guy, <laughs> and at right. the end of the day, you right, do. Exactly. You're like, okay, I do like this guy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but now where can we find you on social media? And all well, the projects uh, you got upcoming? and WaynePeret.com is the website. Uh, I'm just Wayne Peret on Instagram. Mm-hmm. And uh, Facebook page is down at the moment, but, you know, typically everything is Wayne Peret, so Wayne Peret Fan Club. We got the Instagram, we got... Facebook when it comes I'm back trying, up, but we got the know? yeah, we got yeah, the I'm we trying. got the website. But you're doing amazing. Super excited to see what you got upcoming. Excited for Fonzo. Yeah. I mean, how do you get back to back with Tom Hardy? I mean, yeah, it's pretty lucky. impressive. That's impressive. Yeah. That's awesome. But thank you so much for being here. Well, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you guys. I'm Navid Marty. This is After Buzz TV's Mini Spotlight on. We'll catch you guys next time. Our founder Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and me Maria Menunos would like to thank you for tuning in to After Buzz TV. 
Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. <laughs> the views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.